What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to AWS Reinforced live here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My name is Aaron Hunter. I am a developer advocate on the AWS Training Live team, joined with my good security conscious friend, Kyle. Is, is he, somewhere. Are they under the desk? I mean, oh, wait, found him. Hey, everybody, I'm Kyle, your friendly neighborhood security person, I guess. But yeah, hey, we are here to talk about the security specialty certification here at Reinforced 2024 here in Philly, if it wasn't apparent already, even though Aaron so elegantly brought it up. Right. Yeah, Philadelphia, this is awesome. It really is. It really is. And I'm really excited to be talking about the security specialty certification because I might be biased, but I believe that everyone uh, should have some responsibility in the security when it comes to operating in AWS. But that's uh, biases aside, um, I'm also a very, very uh, awful test taker. It, it gives me a lot of anxiety. I don't like it. So I am here to help you, along with Aaron, uh, understand what you need to do to prep for the security specialty certification. Yeah, so the first thing is to, what, go to your show from a couple years ago. It's still somewhat relevant. Yeah, yeah so the AWS Power Hour. Um, that's the Power Hour dance, uh, where we covered all the different domains that the security specialty certification um, you know, covers. And uh, it was actually really fun because it was during the month of October, which uh, coincidentally is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And you also might see me in my costume before I took my daughter out to go trick-or-treating on the last episode because it was on Halloween. Um, but the Power Hour has a lot of great information, live demos. I was joined by a really good friend from training and certification as well. John and Heidel. Yes, John Heidel. I remember that. And we took questions from the community as they were watching us live, and we answered them and just covered the different domains of the security specialty cert. So if you want to check that out, you can go to uh, awspowerhour.com. We should be able to have our screen up here pretty soon. Yep. Uh, but you're going to see the AWS training live on Twitch page. You can scroll down and you can type in security. And the cool thing about that search is it's going to filter down anything security related. So what we can see here is when you are on the page, it uh, looks like it's up on the screen now, you're going to see AWS Training Live on Twitch. Scroll down, type security in the field. And that's going to pull up all things security because we're here at Reinforce focusing on security. And a lot of this is here to help you either prepare for security certification or to help you better understand uh, security concepts like the safe room. Yeah. right? So here we're focusing on this right here, which says AWS Power Hour Security. You can click on that. It's from October 2022. So some of the concepts may be a little dated, but the overall general approach is still going to be very valid. Um, and you can click on security right here because yep. there's six uh, from the past, right? Yep. But let's focus more on where people can go to learn about this certification, which is just the main AWS certification, certification page. Yeah, page. Yeah. yeah, so here you can see you can choose your path. You can uh, select an AWS certification. You can go through all of the exam preparation section, which is really what we're here to talk about, exam prep. We are here to prep for the examinations exactly. of all, knowledge. All of them, including, did you hear about the two that just got announced today? No, I did not. Yeah, it hit like a couple hours ago. So it's hot off the press. There's the AI Practitioner Foundational, okay. or Foundation the Certification, so you know about uh, Cloud Practitioner? Yes. Now there's an AI foundation Sweet. or practitioner, yes. Build and autonomous robots, take over the world. Uh, not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we do also have the second one, which is the Machine Learning Engineer Associate. So it's a brand new associate level. Huh. Anyway, let's talk about the exam prep. Yeah, for let's talk about specialty. security. Yes, Which, yes. by the way, if there's AI foundational stuff, we might need to be more secure. So take the right. specialty certification. Like guardrails. I mean, guardrails. I, AI is making its way into the security specialty anyway, so. Yeah, and you know what's actually interesting is that you and I, just to kind of tease it a little bit, we're going to be talking about creating a chat bot, a security buddy, but we also build in guardrails so it doesn't become a financial friend throughout the week. Yes. So be sure to catch that uh, throughout the week. I believe we got segment today and yeah, tomorrow, and or tomorrow. maybe all tomorrow. I think both of ours for exam prep are today, and then we have the chatbot stuff happening tomorrow. Sounds about right. Yep. So on top of the AWS training certification landing page for certifications, exam prep, all the things, if you go to skillbuilder.aws, we'll have a link in the chat for everyone here. But if you go there, then you'll actually see, if you scroll down, you're going to see a couple different options you can learn by cloud role. So if you're focusing on security, like most of our friends attending Reinforce R, or you can say learn by product domain, generative AI, machine learning, and AI. But if we scroll down, we can see the security specialty certification. It's purple and beautiful. It's purple and beautiful. What happens when we click on that, Kyle? Uh, looks like it's going to bring us up to the exam prep for the security specialty certification. Exactly. Hopefully all of our friends in the chat and everyone watching live now, is following along with what us. What is this website that you have up here? It's a website that I have up here. 
why do I deal with him? <laughs> um, <laughs> grant me the patience. <laughs> so, Skill Builder. Yes. I, I, I could read an address bar, right? Skill Builder is what for training and certification? It is the one-stop shop to help you learn. It gives you over 600 free digital courses that you can learn at your own pace. There's also a subscription model because there's the free options, but you get more when you pay for the Skill Builder. So you have $29 US dollars a month, which then gives you over 1,000 lab exercises, so hands-on experience. You get access to the full the full suite of AWS Cloud Quest, which also has a security badge, Ooh. a security role. So you can learn more about that, get some hands-on experience, and further help you prepare for your exam. So it's like it's covering the different modalities of how learners may prefer how to learn. I know some <laughs> exactly some folks can listen to an instructor all day and then consume the information. Others they want to be hands-on, more tactile, and yep in the thing, and others, they just want to watch on-demand content or maybe mix it up a little bit, right? Exactly, and, and the best way, like, I'm going to ask you how you learn, but first, like you were talking about the different modalities, when I first started learning, uh, the way that I learned was like, I actually tapped into all of them. So I would watch something and I would take like a lot of notes and then I would reference back my notes, but I would listen to the same video while I was driving and then I would do the hands-on exercises they talked about, which just reinforced everything that I listened to. I learn by failing a lot. That's um, a good, it's a good tactic. <laughs> it depends on the topic, really. Yeah. Like some, some topics um, I could learn by just reading a document or like just a book. Yes. Others, others I have to visualize and hear other like practical examples that tie it to the, the concept that's being taught. Others is just like, hey, if I can do, choose my own adventure, it really depends. I'm a very, adventure time. I'm not going to say I'm a unique learner, but I, it was probably difficult to you know, have me as a student when I was growing up. So, right. sorry, teachers. It, it might have been, but you know, you seem like a really fun person. <laughs> um, I'm definitely a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get, get into our first uh, question here? Yeah, so. Kind of break it apart. So, this is how we're going to go about the next uh, moments we have together. I say the moments because I can't see the time. I mean, we have, we have 12 we, minutes. We have 12 minutes. 11 minutes and 53 seconds. So, we're going to show a question. <laughs> we're going to give you time to answer the question. And then we're going to tell you all the reasons why you're wrong. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, the reasons to, to yeah. op optimize your decision making. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're going to go through all the different choices and explain why that may or may not be the best possible answer uh, for the question. And so let's go and bring up the first question that we have for you. Question. Well, first, first. What? I, we didn't tell them where they can get this question. We'll do that afterwards. All right. We'll, yeah. We will bring up the first question. Yeah. All right, we got to give a little bit of dessert before the main yep. meal. Stay tuned. We're going to pull this up full screen here. Hey. Backstage people, you ready for this? Three, two, one, and you have one Bam. minute to, to make your choice. Okay, ready, set, and go. Do, There's supposed to be music. Okay, you do that way better than I do. I think it was a joint effort, honestly. Yeah. But we're distracting our friends from watching this question. So the question is, a company has multiple Amazon S3 buckets in an account. Mm. What, do you, what do you think that means? That they have data that resides in the S3. Okay. And then it says, some buckets are accessible through the internet, but this one minute really isn't a whole lot of time. No, it's not. Yeah. A security administrator wants to implement a solution that detects whether a private bucket becomes internet accessible. The administrator turns on Amazon Guard Duty and activates Whoa. S3 protection. You're reading it like if you have one minute. <laughs> Which Guard Duty finding type should the administrator search for that meet or meets these requirements. We're going to read through the, the response options here in just a few moments, yep. but guard duty is one of the, I like to think of guard duty as the, the guard dog of AWS. I call it the intrusion detection system for an AWS account. Yes. Because it analyzes all the system logs, such as CloudTrail, um, VPC flow logs, Route 53 DNS resolver logs, but then also the opt-in features like S3 protection, EC2 yes. runtime monitoring, EKS runtime monitoring, and all the other various stuff that they put out, and I'm sure there's also going to be some awesome information coming from that group. Should be. Uh, but this week. Let's break down the question. Yes. And also, by the way, this question did come from the official AWS question set from AWS Skill Builder. So you can check that out. Go to the link that we're going to have in the chat here pretty soon. But um, here, the question. We wrote it, we read it, read it, wrote it. We, we spoke it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> a company has multiple Amazon S3 buckets in an account. So there's a single account here. We're not yep. looking at multiple accounts. And when you're reading these questions, I like to think about the, the entire scenario and what's happening. Some buckets are accessible through the internet. So 
from a security standpoint, that could be good. It could also not be good based on the use case. Yeah, I'll just say based on the context and the data that's in it. Yeah, but honestly, I would also never have an S3 bucket directly available from the internet. No. I would have some kind of like API access or, or something. Like CloudFront. Either CloudFront or like a Lambda function or something that can like maybe have a like a pre-signed URL generator. Yep. Yep. Uh, a security administrator wants to implement. By the way, don't overthink the questions like we're doing right now. That's a tip for you. A security administrator wants to implement a solution that detects whether any private bucket becomes internet accessible. So exactly what we're thinking, yep. security conscious first. And the administrator turns on Amazon Guard Duty and activates S3 protection. So you said it's an intrusion detection system. Yep. Or prevention system. What's the difference between the two? So detection is, hey, something funny has happened, and a prevention system is like, I'm going to stop you from doing this thing. I like to think of guard duty as the guard dog of AWS. It's going to bark, but it won't actually bite. Whereas okay. you have a security person, uh, like a, an actual guard, that can stop you, or a gate that can stop you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here in this case, guard duty is going to alert you that something is happening. So which guard duty finding type should the administrator search for that meets these requirements? You know, there is, <laughs> I love it. There's an alien walking around quite literally on the expo floor. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, there, he's probably wait, trying to steal our S3 bucket bits. No, no, get out of here, alien. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's Jeff Lombardo, a principal security SA, so we're all fine. Okay. It's okay. But, no, yep. But yeah, yep. so finding types. So when we look at the finding types, by the way, we get them broken down based on the resource that it is, the finding type is created for. So in yep. this case, all of them are prefixed with S3. Cool. Got it. Get it. Good. And then the rest is kind of self, can sometimes be self explanatory. Like it's written on the tin on what this finding type is for. So would you say, like, account block public access disabled would be necessarily the, the right finding type for this? It sounds good. I mean, account block public access disabled, but what is the question asking? It wants to make sure that whether any private bucket becomes internet accessible. So they need to detect whether, yep. so that's, that's the account level, not the bucket level. Correct. Okay, so that probably is over, it's overshooting the, the solution. Yep, that, okay. is, that, that would not be the finding type that gets generated when an S3 bucket is created, made to be public. So we're focusing now on policy S3 bucket public, bucket block, bucket anonymous. Yes. Which one do you think? Well, so I'm going to go ahead and say, just because for the sake of time, um, the bucket anonymous access granted. And the reason being is because there's a couple ways to make a bucket publicly accessible, right? Yes. Um, so when you have the public access granted, that is saying that any authenticated AWS user, so anyone that logs into the AWS console is then considered in this context a authenticated uh, AWS user. Correct. Um, so that would grant them access, but that doesn't necessarily mean any stranger on the internet has access to that S3 bucket, and that's what we're focusing on here. Yes. So the bucket anonymous access granted is the one that's saying, hey, world, come get the data that's in this S3 bucket. Right. Now you might be going, Kyle, why the heck would I ever want to do that? Um, well, ph philosophical discussions aside, maybe you have an S3 bucket that's hosting like images for a web page that you have. Like now, cats or dogs like, like, or like dog memes. A aliens at a, a conference in Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, Could be anything. But uh, pictures of Kyle. You know, it doesn't really adhere to those best practices. But uh, like Aaron mentioned, you probably have a Lambda function or CloudFront in front to serve the content. But uh, that would be bucket anonymous access granted. Yes. Now, if you want to know more about all the different finding types, um, they're very well documented in the Guard Duty documentation as far as. Um, what they detect, how yep. they trigger, yep. and then also some guard duty finding types will go from medium to high or high to medium, depending on contextual uh, information as well. It is documented, but you know, being from the training team, like I gotta flex the training muscle. Flex it. Okay, let's let's go back ah. over to the to this landing page right here within Skill Builder. <laughs> Um, I flexed too hard. My shirt almost disintegrated. <laughs> it, I saw it. It was, start, it was starting to shred away. So here we see the AWS Certified Security Specialty because we're focusing on guard duty here. It's not going to specifically call out anything for guard duty. And our friends watching live may think, well, where do I go? How do I find it? Well, this cool thing right here, the search bar at the very top, you can type guard. Is it one word? Duty. Uh, one word. 
One word? One you sure word. about that? We're going to figure it out right now. Duty. Two words? Duty. 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 Okay. Guard Duty. There it is. You are correct. So you can get started with Amazon Guard Duty for free. It's a one-hour training. You can have the AWS Security Incident Response Compromise IAM Credentials Use Case free, 40 minutes. You have the Securing and Protecting Your Data in Amazon S3. That seems like it's that's, pretty That's relevant. like right on the nose. Right on, it's an hour and 40 minutes. And then the AWS Storage Gateway Deep Dive Tape Gateway. But let's go ahead and click on this one and see what's happening here. So the cool thing about all of this is, yes, the question we presented, we showed you on the screen, is from AWS Skill Builder, and it's from the official practice question set. So you have 20 questions there that you can test. We have one question we just showed you. We have two questions later on today, so watch that recording. That yes. Kyle and I are going to be stomping around, romping around, but we'll still be here for you. Uh, but this one. Okay, about this course with Amazon S3, you can use a different number of approaches. And then in the course, it talks about cores, URLs, Amazon Macy, and who it's for, cloud architects, storage architects, developers, and operations engineers. So a lot of really cool resources there. There certainly is. Yep. Now let's break this down one more time before we leave for our friends, because it comes back to the option to, oh, there it is, prepare for the security specialty. Within AWS Skill Builder and this exam course, uh, there is this, oh, oh, hold on. This is the official practice question set that we took that question from, that we were so graciously granted permission to take the question from, yes. from our exam prep team. Thank, thank you, team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if we click on that, it's going to open it up, and then we'll be able to see the entire question set process. So you can sign up for it, you can enroll for it, and again, this magical word keeps appearing which is a zero dollar cost. Free 99. Free. It's, not even, it's not even 99, it's just free. It's just free? It's just free, free. Sweet. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's not leave them hanging. We got one more question we want to bring up. Do we? Yeah. One more question? One more question. Let's bring up one more question. I thought we just had the one. No, we have one more question. Do we? Yeah, security teams creating a response plan and event employee performance. We, we did that one in the recording. Oh, darn it. So stay tuned. Well, we'll, stay, we'll stay tuned stay for tuned more things. For more things. Yeah. And hey, don't forget, there's a survey. We're going to drop that link in the chat. Do the survey. Follow twitch.tv forward slash AWS on air. And stay tuned for more from AWS on air live at AWS Reinforced here in Philly.